It's Tuesday night, good folks at home. Who's got two thumbs and loves Channel 31? This guy. Who's got two thumbs and loves the locker room? This guy. Welcome back. Big night tonight. George Clooney, forget him. Boy, George, put him in the rubbish bin. George C. Scott, who the hell is he? We're going to be back after this break on the locker room tonight with part two of a very special interview with a very special man, and he's not George Negus. Join us in a moment. It is Tuesday night. Welcome back. What's left of Greg Blake since he's been uh, taken from the crypt is with you tonight, along with a very special guest whom we'll introduce in a moment. And of course, Dougie Hodson, my co-host. Dougie, uh, the diet's you, going Mr. well Blake. and fantastic. Your mathematical skills, and that's a whole other story, a uh, beyond reproach. And of course, our very special guest in the house, testify, I represent, is the great man. He was with us last week. Tonight, he's going to talk. It's all soccer, full soccer for the next 25 minutes or so. Uh, George Denikin, welcome back. Greggy, uh, can I just say, it's incredible being in the same room. It's not only yourself, but also the incredible shrinking man. He has, he's in dropped... In seven days, he's dropped a stone. He's oh, dropped oh, a stone. How man. does that translate in modern par- <laughs> parlance? Just so you know, it actually takes me less time to shave now, seeing that I've only got three chins instead of seven that I had. No, you're doing really, really well, Dougie. It's a it's it's very good. personal, no, very no, good, fantastic. Not bad for me. I like it. And, like it. Uh, <laughs> George, we're so so glad to. You. What what has been fabulous because we've we've talked a lot to George behind the scenes and on, on off camera over the last couple of weeks. He's got a million stories, and we thought we'd get him back because he's good value. And oh, look, I'm hoping George that at some point in those million stories you'll actually find one that's entertaining and interesting. Yeah, so go for it. Yeah. Um, but we want to talk about soccer and, uh, because we are soccer focused, of course. Um, Where would you like to start? I look, you've got a really rich history, and we, we we love talking about the Australian game and the old NSL as well. Um, you've got. A, um, you've been in touch with the game here since the formation of the NSL, which is, you know, 35 odd years ago before now. That even, before no. that. Yeah, yeah. So you've so, gone all the way through then, George, from really, let's say, unfortunately, start to, unfortunately, I can, to I can take you way back, way, be, way before time, uh, almost, almost to the time when television first contemplated uh, covering the game. Uh, so the go thoughts, back to that point. Go back to that point. Uh, well, uh, for me, uh, football, as I know it, not soccer. Um, started for me when the ABC started broadcasting or showcasing the FA Cup every year. So I, as a young kid, I used to fight with mum and dad and say to them, please, 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 I'll go to sleep at 7 o'clock. Can you wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning so I can watch my Tottenham Hotspur take on whoever they were taking on? And as you know, if you're any reasonable judge of the FA Cup history, uh, one of the clubs that appeared uh, more often than not uh, in the famous white uh, was Tottenham. And in black and white television, it was very exciting. And when it came to colour, it was even more exciting. Yep. And it made it even more impactful for, for me because the first FA Cup I did in colour happened to be with a young guy who used to wear red. And his name was Craig. Craig Johnston. Yeah, Craig Johnston. It was his first uh, year back from uh, England. So he had retired and he joined me at Channel 9. And we had just knocked over all the other television stations to nab to the rights the to the FA Cup. What, what cost, a, us a, cost us a mozza. I'll tell you about that. What, what a know. wonderful journey, though, for, 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 uh, for you to have those wonderful memories of, of early age when you were yep. young and, yep. and, and, and actually getting to that place in your life where you could combine... Soccer yeah. and television, and the passion, two areas yeah. that you have a great passion Fantastic. for. Fantastic. And more importantly, I, I, I had a real live hero, someone I had watched not only score for his club and win a medal, but had represented Australia. Because I wasn't old enough, uh, and uh, I don't remember the Marston, uh, Joe Marston, who mm. was a fantastic character, and played in an FA Cup final. Uh, but for me, the 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 archetypal Australian star was Craig Johnston. Mm. And he was the one that, as a 15, 16 year old, defied all the odds. And while everyone else was saying, you can't do it, you haven't got it, this kid believed deep, deep inside in his recesses. While everyone and else, did it, and done and it. And did it. And done it. And, and done it, yeah, absolutely. And I have to admit, though, you look, I look back at those at times, because you know when you talked about Mum, Dad, can I stay yeah, up? exactly right. I was exactly the yeah, same. Yeah. I was because I remember because afterwards at two o'clock the Scottish came on. And let Straight me tell you, afterwards. and let me tell you, 
uh, those great, those great uh, uh, Scottish FA Cups, uh, Celtic <laughs> and Rangers. Oh. It was war. And, and then you had to go to school. And, and this is going to crush me because this is what's been happening. Now, good folks at home, you need to listen to me carefully here because we've had, as I mentioned, George here for a couple of weeks now and, and we talk and talk and talk and what we're going to do is run out of time to talk about it. So you've got to keep it brief. Just keep it brief. All right, one, one word answer. Okay. For example, how much do you like me? Fantastic. That'll do. Let's move on. NSL, the dawning of a new age. And you know what, what I think is fabulous and, 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 and much unconsidered by the, the new football, if you will, in this country, is the fact that the NSL was formed before there was any national sports. There was two years before basketball cottoned yep, on and there was yep, a national... It yep. was years before the AFL or the... We were... Dude, we were groundbreakers. What do yep. you remember about that time, George? Uh, I remember that uh, we, we, we saw cities and we saw colours and we, we, we saw uh, this fantastic uh, array of talents footballing talent that had come from all over the world and suddenly it was playing for a Perth club, it was playing for a Brisbane club, it was playing for an Adelaide club and it was magical. And, uh, and I thought it was, uh, as you say, uh, groundbreaking and again, it seems to me that the, we, the one thing we didn't do very well was market the game. But marketing's changed now, we'll go on to that later on though, Blakey, but is there an era there, is there a player there that really stood out in the memory though, Georgie? Well, I've, as a young kid... Who I... aroused you, George, yeah. I think that's a question. <laughs> <laughs> the, kid, the kid that really aroused me was a guy called Roy Blitz, hmm? and he played for Prague, for Sydney uh, Prague, and another guy was a guy called Ron Lord, who was the great uh, goalkeeper of that era, and uh, I remember seeing him star... In a derby, I'm sorry, not a derby, in a, in a night game, it was FC Basel or FC Baal playing uh, Sydney Prague, 2 2 draw under lights at the old ES Marks Field. And for me, it was a summer's, a summer's night. Uh, my, my uncle had taken me to the game because dad was still working. And I, can, and I can remember it was played under, under lights. And like television, everything looks a whole lot better under lights. And for me, it was a magical evening. And years later, I got to play under lights in a curtain raiser before a Manchester United played Australia. And again, an exciting time. And can you imagine, you're in, the, you're in the dressing room and two guys walk in and say, we would like you to consider coming to Old Trafford to trial. And the two guys were Nobby Stiles, who was carrying his teeth in one hand, and another guy called uh, Bobby, Bobby Charlton. Well, look, we are, going to, we are going to, in the most appropriate manner, of course, possible. We're going to milk you for all your worth. We've Thank got you. to take a brief take break, long. Doug. <laughs> I've, looked at, I've, I've craved milking you for so long, Thank George you yep. You're on the locker room. It is Tuesday night. My hearts are pounding. They're hackles or whatever the things on the back of my yep. neck are standing up because Danikian's in the house. See you in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to the locker room. It's Tuesday night. Greg Blake on deck, Dougie Hodgson, of course, our special guest in uh, the studios here at Stan Hope Country Club, or Stan Thorpe Country, or it's a country club anyway, and it's very pretty, and it's well adorned and well turned out, as am I. Thank you. Uh, it is locker room night. Listen, guys at home, if you love uh, the old soccer and you love uh, the locker room, don't forget to check out uh, the Locker Room TV Facebook page. Since uh, last week's uh, show, we've got some fantastic messages. Thanks to some of my old compatriots, Kyle Patterson, uh, Lou Sticker, people. And uh, one here from uh, Martin Clark, a message who said, looks like Dougie ate all the pies. <laughs> but now it appears he's starting to become bulimic and he's throwing them up. As well. That's really bad taste. Ha having said that, I don't care. Um, and uh, Starthy, Starthy, fantastic show, love it. And uh, Candice, who um, immediately I'm warming to because she said, love you, Greg. Well, Candice, from the heart. Love you too, sweetheart. I'll st I hope, hopefully you're real and, and, <laughs> and not one of those internet yep. people. That, yep. But look, I love you too. In fact, uh, I loved you before you knew I loved you. I'm going nowhere with that, George, so I'm going to let it go you now. Just gonna love George. Love let's just love George. <laughs> let's love George. Let's love George. Let's love George. Let me, we touched on the marketing side, I think. There's been a big transition, really, in the marketing from the old National League to the yeah. A-League yeah. now. And I... And yeah. I my believer, that's been the biggest, most success story, I suppose, of the uh, A-League to the date. Dougie, understand very simply. If you've got one bank and it says, we're going to do all your promos, 
we're going to send one message out and it's going to represent all the clubs in the country. And we're going to make sure that if we sell one ad, we're going to do it for all of you. So everyone gets a similar job done and you get a consistent message out, right? What we had in the past was Sydney Olympic would do one thing, South Melbourne would do another, Heidelberg would do another, uh, Melbourne Croatia would do this, Sydney Croatia would do that. There was no continuity and it was dog eat dog. One thought they could outdo the other. What they've done with the A-League, this new, this new um, version of the game, which I think is a fabulous success, because they've understood that they have only that much in the pot. So how, much, how well can we spread that money through the entire now, league? And now, they've done it consistently. And, and, I'll, throw, and I'll throw this to you as well, because yep. I think it's been marketing great. Um, yep. Yep. The only thing, and I'll say this, live, I, 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 dis, I actually disagree, I disagree with certain things of aspects of what they've done. They've made everyone accountable, yep. including themselves, yep. which yep. Yep. professionalism in there. Them picking coaching criteria, etc., yep. etc. Et that thing I disagree, because if you own the club... If I was a franchise owner, I'd like to own people in there to bat, not coming through there and there yep. into that situation, you know. And I believe at the present moment that there is clubs struggling out there financially. Correct. Um, Correct. Who's picking up the bill there, the FFA? I would suggest that uh, unlike the past, yep. where each and every club had to do the best they could, and understand this, there were some fat, fantastically passionate people, right, and, and magnificent volunteers spread throughout the game for the last 100 years. What we didn't have was professional um, administrators. And the game now is demanding, and we're finding at every level. If you're going to take up the cudgels and run the game, you've got to be able to understand that, how to run a, a P&L. That is a profit and loss sheet. And it can't, you can't pretend that you've got the money there. And listen, when you have the money and you have to pay the tax man, you pay the tax. Okay, okay. Right? George, you're clearly a strong advocate, though, of, of what's the, the direction the game's yeah, taking. Yeah, I, but I, ha I, having I, said that, there is a, it's a dual-edged sword for you in a lot of ways because yep. one of your great passions as well was South Melbourne Hellas, yep. where you were president for yep. a significant body yep. of time. And South Melbourne Hellas, like a lot of the uh, traditional clubs, like all the traditional clubs, were swept away in the torrent and, and, and almost uh, forgotten and neglected now. Um, so for you, you know, in a sense, even though you're, you're advocating for the game as it is now, yep. and it, it, it's almost uh, on the other side in terms of, you know, your passion for South Melbourne Hellas. Yep. How do you balance that? What, with my passion for Melbourne Heart? Yeah. Just okay. So, so for well, the viewers, you are it's ambassador very... for yeah, Melbourne Heart, yeah, George. I'm, a, I'm ambassador for Melbourne, Melbourne Heart. Heart. And, my, and I, as a former president of South Melbourne, you're always the president of South Melbourne. It's like the, you're the president of the United States. Until you, you're put in the casket, you're always the President of the United States. They don't say the former President. They always say President of the United States, Mr Bill Clinton. Uh, President of the United States, Mr George Sonsa. Yep. And the same applies as your President of South Melbourne. When you go to a function, you're always there as a President of South Melbourne. And for me, the blue and whites are a part of who you are. And I'm part of that tapestry. And I would always want the best for them. But I, I've, underst I've understood that in life, the first battle you've got to win is the propaganda war. Yeah? And that means you've got to bring as many people on board as you possibly can. Uh, when I was there, for the two years I was there, we had a major job to do. We had to repair and, uh, and tidy up all the loose bits before we could introduce the club to the VPL, to the Victorian Premier League. That transition from the NSL... <coughs> which was a national competition, to a state-based competition. We had to take this soccer giant. We had to pay all the debts, or as many as we could. We had to make, come to an understanding with the, with the tax office that that was all that we could uh, you know, fund. And the rest they waived and let us get on with trying to make the club function so you at think, a new but, level. Yeah, but saying that, and I've seen it around. And that's the hardest I can, I can see, but we've also still got people that know nothing about the game yep. involved in the game, which because of financial reasons they are in the game, which yeah. is fantastic. And we need them people. But you need everybody. Goes, you, and you most definitely do, from supporters yep. to yep. everything else yep. and away we yep. go. So... I don't know about you good folks at home, but I'm fascinated and aroused at the same time. Just to be sitting in his presence is electrifying. Stay with us after the break. More George Danikin and Dougie's shirt coming up on The Locker Room Tuesday night. Rock on, dudes. All right. Yeah. <laughs>
We're being very serious at the moment. I feel like I'm going on the cusp of tears and I want to move away <laughs> from this deeply emotional place. No, you can't. I the wish game, to. The game demands that we are as passionate as we can be. Well, you I'm... ask me a simple question. Yes. How can you be a South Melbourne fan and still be a Melbourne Heart fan? I just wonder how simple. emotionally that works. It's very simple. Yeah. The A-League has two Melbourne clubs at the moment. One is Heart, the other is Victory. One's red and white which, as far as I'm concerned, are the original colours of South Melbourne, mm. the Bloods, mm. if you will, mm. and they feel very comfortable with that. Uh, the blue of the victory is, uh, is also um, an interesting colour because a half of the squad, the original squad at, at, at victory, were South Melbourne boys. So I, I felt very comfortable, but I didn't want to jump from being president of South Melbourne to being an instant fan of victory. So I stood out of the game for three or four years. And the new franchise happened to be one that I got excited about. So and, while they're there and while they're performing, I want them to be as successful as they possibly can. Dougie Hodgson, mate, great to see you, pal. Down here in Frankston. Yeah. Long way from um, the roots that you've been all over the world. Yeah. You've had a great career, mate, as a player, now as a coach. Great to see you down here. How's the team looking for this 2013 season, mate? Good, yeah, we're happy with the way pre-season's gone. Um, you know, the balance of the squad's looking good. Uh, a little bit disappointing that uh, Orlando Engelar, our marquee signing, fractured his leg early on in pre-season, but... Um, you know, we're still confident with the squad we've put together that we'll uh, be competitive and hopefully be there at the end of the year uh, fighting out for the prize. I think all the heart supporters will be doing the same, mate, and uh, I suppose two weeks to go, big one against victory. Any surprises out there? I know we can't go live and tell anyone because they might get the tactics, but full team, injury-free, ready to go. I know we've yeah. rested H. Yeah. Yeah, we, we look, we, we've got a couple of players that uh, one player uh, probably won't be playing is Michael Mifsud, our striker, because he's got to go away with international duty. Um, but the, the rest of the squad it, we should be fully fit. Uh, Robbie Willard, our Dutch defender, he's um, back training now with the team and uh, he should be ready to go. He hasn't played too many pre-season games. Um, Harry will be ready to go and um, you know we'll be prepared for round one against Victory. Looking forward to it and uh, you know, it'll be a, a great day for our supporters and our club and uh, we can't wait to get the season started. I think from Frank's the point of view you came down to the four shores, we've got great views out there. Does, um, how's the body ticking for yourself now, mate? Do you miss running around out there? Or? No, I don't miss it at all. I, I don't miss icing my knee after the games and after training. Um, yeah, no, my body was uh, was in bits towards the end of my career, and um, you know I'm happy to let others run and uh, you know kick the ball about. But uh, look, it's these days are great getting out in the community, and uh, you know the the, the boys um, also know that uh, it's important that you know they represent the club well. They always do that and and hopefully we'll put on a good performance um, this afternoon. Strong team out there today, mate, or a bit of mixture? Yeah, we'll have a lot of young boys out there today. A lot of them will be our youth team players, and we'll have a, about three or four first-team players that didn't play the other day on Friday. Um, so, you know, we're still, of course, we, you know, it's a, a friendly game, but the, the youth boys uh, always uh, are looking to move up, and uh, we had two uh, youth team players playing our first team the other day, so... It's a good opportunity for them to stake a claim and hopefully, you know, the, when I need to call upon young boys that uh, I know what they're going to give me and so this is important for them today. I suppose the last, mate, from people from Mount Eliza Soccer Club and everyone from Frankston, mate, I've, I hope you and wish Chappelle the best for 2013-14 season. I hope you do very well, my friend. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. It's been a long four-month pre-season, I hear, my friend. How's it been? Yeah, it's been fantastic. You know, it's great to be home. This is a uh, fantastic weather, not like England. I'm um, just glad to be back and you know, excited for the start of the season. I suppose you got uh, two weeks ago to the season starts, and the whispers is everyone's looking fit and rearing to go. What sort of from the, from the heart people? What do they expect that's going to come this year? 
Well, hopefully better than last year, you know what I mean? I think we'll take, you know, one game at a time. But like you said, we've been training hard. The boys look good. And obviously, you know, we're ready for the, the first game of the season. You know, a few little things to tinker on the team. But besides that, everyone's looking good. First game of the season is um, Melbourne Victory versus Melbourne Heart. A bit of a rivalry game. You'll be used to them hard, um, hard games. What are you expecting on the crowd? Oh, well, I heard there's going to be about 50,000, so, you know, it's going to be fantastic. Great for the sport, you know, great for, you know, Melbourne as a whole, and hope hey, it's a great spe uh, spectacle for the supporters. I think, mate, we once again, we thank you very much, Paddy, for coming down for, you um, for this, mate, and all the best for the year, and hope you're all shining at the end of the year, mate. Appreciate that. Thank Cheers, you very mate. much. Harry Kill, mate, great to meet you, pal. Here in my Mount Eliza, Frankston, mate, uh, welcome back to Australia. Great to see you. I'm sure everyone's looking at part, mate. Welcome in there. How are you feeling? How are you settling in is only the question I'm going to ask you, my friend. Oh, look, it's, it, it, it's always great to be back in Australia, especially back in Melbourne, where it's the heart of uh, football, especially in Australia. And, you know, to be part of this uh, Melbourne Harp team, it's, it's something special, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. Good to see you and hopefully when you enjoy it, mate, you know you'll play the best football you can. From us here at Mount Eliza, mate, I wish you all the best, pal. Thank you And I hope much. you have a great year, mate, and um, successful. I really appreciate that. Thank Cheers, you very Harry. much. Thank you. Ian Jamison, mate, congratulations, buddy, on the Ohio Peninsula Select, pal. A great honour. Down here against Melbourne Hart, mate. Um, yep. What do we expect today from the boys, mate? We've got a good young team, old team. What we got? Uh, good young team. Um, been around the sort of Division Three, Division Two ranks, these boys. All very good footballers, so um, hopefully we can get the ball down and play and have a bit of a go at them. Why not? That's what it's all about here. It's a bit of a charity day, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, we'll Mate, see how we go. It'll be great to see. I think Hart's got a couple of older heads playing and some younger boys in there, so I'm tipping there'll be some whippets out there today. I hope the old boys are in there. Yeah, I'll make sure that the old Cam Leopolds the, the, uh, of, the, of the group aren't there today, so, um, so we can uh, at least be sharp enough to... To compete with the boys, so oh, poor, Cam. <laughs> poor Cam, I gave him one, didn't I? <laughs> mate, <laughs> yeah. mate, congratulations on the select study. I wish Thanks, you all Doug. the best today, Cheers. mate, and I uh, hope the boys enjoy the run Thank out. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Craig Lewis, great to see you, buddy, here at Frankston. Mate, um, being part of the uh, Peninsula uh, All Star team, your coach and staff, mate, how's it looking out there today? It's good. Uh, we've collated a good group of boys, and you know they're sharp, they're fit, they're ready to go. And no, for me personally, it's good to be back involved coaching again. It's uh, got the fire going again, so um, no, it should be a good day. The crowd has just turned out really well, and you know, the weather's been put on for us, so it should be a really good day. Up to me, have... Craig, it's good to see you back involved in the game, mate. As the man that's played overseas and been involved, and it's great to see you are back, and hopefully can continue back, my friend. Yes, well, as I say, I've, this, this last year's sort of gave me a little bit of inspiration to get back and, and get involved with the coaching again. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking to do something next this next season. And tell me, is Craig Lewis is going to bang in three today out there today, mate, or what? <laughs> Not at my age, son. <laughs> <laughs> How's the any young boys up front? What do we expect? A bit of live wire? Oh, look, we're going we're gonna to have a go at them today. We're, we've, we've put an attack inside out. We're going to go a 4-3-3. And, you know, we've put the pressure on the lads to, to take it to them. And... You know, we've got to put on a good show for the people of, of the peninsula today and you know hopefully we do ourselves justice and the boys apply themselves the way they the way we would expect them to so uh, you know we're pretty quietly confident mate i wish you all the best today have a great run out craigie and good luck to the boys cheers pal Two beautiful men and me. Uh, that's all we've got for the locker room on a Tuesday night. Make it your tradition. Be here or be somewhere else that's not here. Get with the program. Channel 31, Tuesday nights, the locker room. Whoa! Look how excited I am about it. See ya. Welcome to Tuesday night. It's locker room night. The tradition continues. George Clooney, forget him. George H. Scott, forget him. Ditch the joy. And you just recorded my first stroke. Call an ambulance. <laughs>